स्वयं प्रभा फ्री डी चैनल फॉर एजुकेशन Okay, and then share the screen. Is it uh, uh, is it now visible as well as audible? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Uh, Sashwat, the, for the question you are asking, um, here is where you could see see particularly when we are uh, uh, moving into local. uh histogram based uh, approaches so you could see there that uh, yeah, see for example this will be almost a uh, uniform region except there could be noise here and there so because of that what would happen is if you are using a simple local histogram what it could do is it could introduce you more noise there the noise gets in other words noise gets amplified so as we discussed earlier when we are doing histogram equalization so those intensities which are there on the lower side will become much lower right dark may dark pixels will become more dark similarly the bright pixels would become much brighter so because of that and when there are here and there few points there that could cause a problem so on the other hand in addition to local on the contrary if you are using a global histogram um so it is a uh, rare means in many few instances it could be useful there, there could be a lot of because the shading for example i was showing you this uh, image from uh, uh, one of the web pages so this is a the input image as you could see here the illumination is not uniform across the whole image so then you could see if you are use this is a quite common scenario that you could come across um, particularly when we ourselves are capturing images with a uh, non uniform uh, illumination conditions okay so for example this is on this input image assume that uh, you are directly applying histogram equalization you would end up with an image like this okay and then if you are using a adaptive histogram thus that would take care of these issues and you could get a pretty good result here what you would see here but then if there is some noise here and there then what could happen is this goods gets too much amplified uniform region suppose when there is a uniform region or which you are applying a local histogram then what would happen is noise gets amplified a lot so that is where you would be clipping your uh, uh, histogram as well prob okay so that's what we have seen contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization and then you distribute it across okay so that would give you very good results when compared to the other in many scenarios so this is what you would see there hmm. uh, are there any uh, is that clear uh, shashwat is that fine yes sir okay uh, anyone else have any questions here so anyway i will not ask you to code for uh, uh, contrast limited histogram equalization although it is not that difficult but i strongly recommend you to go through that code in one of the languages you prefer you would find it out for example in open cv and also in matlab you have clahe contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization code as i said this is not very, as such very difficult to do it as we were uh, uh, discussing how to do that uh, during this slide where you just put a cut off on the pdf that value you would distribute assume that you have 256 uh, uh, pixels so that means 256 values not pixels 256 intensity values are there that value you distribute across everything so that is like uh, lifting the whole uh, pdf by that base then again uh, some of the at some of the intensity values it would be more than uh, the uh, threshold no because you are raising it and then you repeat the whole process until that uh, small value that is added is within the limits here this would be continued that's all and then and uh, after that you would continue with your histogram equalization okay so if there are no questions here we will go ahead from this part 
uh, assignment anyway i we will uh, uh, i will so ask one last question i have yes shashwat yes uh, so this uh, this contrast limiting this thing is done uh, post equalization or prior to the equalization it is done before histogram equalization okay okay mm, after that you do histogram equalization yeah okay Mm, that too usually uh, you this is what you do local histogram equalization not just the global histogram equalization oh, okay sir and then uh, what you need to also pay attention is uh, uh, what is the window size you are taking uh, just take a look at in python uh, you take a look at or any other for that matter so usually this even you don't there will be some default parameters uh, for the window size also for applying this contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization let's say the window size is 8 by 8 64 pixels are there so typically some 40 or something like that above which they would put uh, a clipping uh, such kind of things will be there so in case if you are if you happen to play with the, the window sizes you then have to also look at how you are putting the threshold there that's something you need to take a look at otherwise if you are looking in terms of percentages and doing something then it's different so although you are using a built in function pay attention to what are the default values it is taking and uh, if you are changing any of the parameters just make sure whether uh, the other parameter is changed in terms if it is in terms of percentages probably it would still reasonably work well but nevertheless pay attention to those parameters there okay sir so, yeah is there yeah. any way to automate Uh, the setting the parameter values without uh, inputting the values ourselves for every image um uh, see uh, means at least the window size this is dependent on the type of image this would vary um so for example maybe if you have some image like this okay this is the region where you have roughly similar intensity distribution okay uh, oh, this is another region which is having similar distribution and the rest is more or less similar distribution so actually depending on the image you would be figuring out what is the window size to be used what you could empirically fix is for example the percentage above which it has to be clipped if you are looking in terms of percentages rather than in histogram number of pixels that are uh, having that particular intensity rather than that if you are looking at the pdf of it and you can put a cut off in terms of percentage that you could fix empirically Oh, but this window size is something is quite dependent on the image that you are looking at. Okay, sir. So maybe if you have similar nature of images, once you are clear, then probably you could go ahead with it. Say, for example, X-ray images coming from the same scanner uh, under same illumination conditions and same setup, then you would be able to figure out, let's say, what should be the um, window size. okay and other stuff and other parameters as well but if that is not the case if the um, conditions under which you are capturing the image be it the illumination or be it uh, even changing the object uh, for which you are taking uh, the images then it would uh, then you have to experiment with it it's like a, something like a data driven uh, settings yeah yeah mm. okay good so any other point okay then we will uh, move on from this um, the, the assignment anyway i will upload there but i have a rough uh, details of the assignment I'll just show you that i will make some more changes here anyway uh, so one would be the first one gamma correction hmm. the score do you we already discussed how to write do the gamma correction in matlab it's hardly one line code don't make uh, it too big right yeah, we were already discussing that so this is something i would give you the x ray images uh, for uh, four patients what you need to do is you visually see which gamma correction is uh, making sense better visually for you and then you apply that gamma uh, and uh, then you write the inferences also uh, about uh, that particular gamma we already discussed it right uh, what is that region of uh, intensities that gets brighter when your gamma is greater than 1 and gamma is less than 1 right that's what we have gamma equal to 1 is anyway the same linear curve so what would happen when your gamma is greater than 1 what is the impact of it on your transformation 
lower intensity is get not to smile that right so the range so uh, similarly you could make an inference is it lower or higher hmm let me just check that out i thought it is the other way around that was part 3 right or part 1 yeah that's part 1 just one minute yeah you are right so uh, from the gap no that was wrong actually what uh, so if your gamma is greater than 1 you could see here that on the higher side of intensities l is your input intensities right or r, r on the x axis is your input intensities s and y axis is the input intensity output intensity to which you are transforming them see you could see here suppose if i am using something like r equal to 0.5 look at here see for a small range here right for a small range of higher intensities are getting mapped to a large range of output intensities here on the contrary look at for example um r equal to 0.2 look at here a small range of intensities on the lower side are getting mapped to a large range here so it's exactly the opposite to what you told isn't it so actually i said the inverse of it i said the lower intensities get mapped to a single value when gamma is greater than one Hmm, so sorry. yeah the yeah. lower intensities get mapped also yeah so means what i'm saying is suppose in your image if you have uh, the bright in the, the image is on the brighter side most of the pixels are on the brighter side okay but it is uh, over a very large very small width here okay that you want to enhance then you go for gamma greater than um, one isn't it hmm yes it? sir yes sir. fine good Uh, so you take a similar look into it see for example maybe here it's the dark region that you would like to enhance you want to see in the lungs you could hardly see anything here so what should be the gamma value is gamma should be less than 1 here and if you increase gamma higher values this is what the effect will be okay so yeah just figure out whichever makes sense again uh, somebody may feel this is better or there could be always slight variations but at least whether it is greater than 1 or less than 1 and rough range should be more or less if it is good you just that's good enough okay that's one thing i would give you uh, then I, another one uh, so for on the same set of images i would ask you to do histogram equalization again writing your own code Uh, this is not difficult right we already discussed this is also like very few lines of code here for histogram equalization also so try that out then uh, adaptive histogram equalization and uh, that you please uh, uh, implement yourself again so this is where i would like you to also think about uh, making you see one brute force way is that you take for each pixel suppose you are uh, ignore for the time being uh, the pixels which are there in the boundaries you consider the rest of the pixels assume that you are using 8 by 8 size of uh, window so what you would do then for that pixel you take all the 64 uh, pixels in that 8 by 8 region you plot the histogram right and for that histogram you do the equalization and from that you will know now you look at what is the intensity of the center pixel for which you are computing this uh, uh, or which you have taken the neighborhood and now from the histogram equalized histogram see where this is getting mapped to and now in the output image you replace that pixel with this mapped intensity and you repeat the whole process for all the pixels in the image hmm, is that clear how you do adaptive histogram equalization is that clear sir uh is it clear yeah sir uh, while doing this adaptive histogram equalization hmm. we move the window with the side of one or with the side of the window size okay 
you you uh, in this implementation you do it with just one uh, you just every pixel you take the center around that and do it out okay sir uh, there is actually that that kind of implementation is also there uh, where they do it uh, i was showing it anyway i didn't go uh, so this is where it, this is something similar to what you are uh, thinking of the another possibility where you compute it for each kind of tile and then you interpolate it but let's rather this is just a 2d image let's go with this where you for every pixel you take a window around it of let's say 8 by 8 size and then you figure out the value to which this pixel intensity is getting mapped to when you are doing histogram equalization for all the pixels within that window and apply it here what is one uh, so this is also referred to as histogram sliding approach so what is the optimization you could do while constructing the histogram in this whole process hmm is the question clear see for example now we are going to uh, take this 8 by 8 window centering each pixel is there any optimization that you could do uh, ignoring those uh, boundary pixels Um, while constructing histogram for different pixels, say I'm I did it at uh, x1, y1. Okay, this whole process. Now I am moving to x2, y2. Is there any optimization that you could do in that? Well, we already know half the pixels uh, from the previous window. We already know how many? Like thirty-two uh, pixels. Uh, Okay, uh, so let me put it this way. Let's say I have a W by W window. Okay. So the mean square loss. Mm, no, uh, I'm just asking about your construction of histogram. Uh, instead of doing it from scratch to a neighborhood, uh, say let me put it more uh, more pointedly, uh, more specifically. See, I have a I computed my histogram at a pixel x1 y1. Okay, at a pixel location x1 y1. Now. i moved it to x1 plus 1 y1 so i moved it in the uh, in the row to the next pixel so what are, now how does the histogram change now can you say now what exactly new intensity is getting added here and what are getting uh, subtracted from there so the new pixels which are being added when we change the shift of one mm. th those will be added minus the ones which are being uh, exited from the window right so how many would be there which one can you tell exactly i am giving you that it is the original initial pixel at which i computed histogram is x1 y1 hmm my new pixel is x1 plus 1 y1 sir we will know 56 uh, pixels uh, intensities uh, okay i uh, now i am uh, not keeping track of actually that uh, number i am not no, giving sir. any number to w so maybe you could tell uh, directly now In terms so of w by two, w yeah. by two will be added and w by two will be subtracted. Is it w by two? No, sir. W square minus w. W square. Yeah. Sorry. See what is w square. Per see total w. number of pixels is w square, right? Yes, sir. And now yes, I moved right. it uh, to x one plus one. So how many pixels are changing now? W pixels. W pixels are changing, so that which is there in the a new column is all that you have to add here, add, and, and you need that sal. So if you pro, instead of now going through W square pixels, right, you just have to go through two W pixels for constructing a histogram. Is that clear? hello anyone have any question otherwise i will draw and show if it is not clear i will just see if i could uh, draw here i will just try to draw it here hmm see assume that this is my image now suppose earlier 1 2 3 okay very small one i am considering okay 
so this pixel you would be computing you 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 won't be taking of course three by three but uh, i don't want to draw a bigger uh, one so i'm just plotting this okay so uh, so you take all these nine pixels and you would be constructing your histogram now when you want to construct histogram for this point what would happen now your new window is this one correct so all you have to do now is you you need to subtract this so you look at what are all the corresponding intensities and from the histogram of those parts you 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 for for those bins are in your vector or array it's, is it an array it's a vector 1d vector 0 to 255 right that's how you construct histogram you look at what is the intensity here and then you subtract one from that histogram earlier histogram values and then you simply now add for these in histogram values so originally this is for example w by w if you take you have w square pixels if you don't do this you would be doing every time operations of the order of w square now if you use this sliding window concept hmm, all you need to do then is order of w 2w anyway you mention it only you will worry about only the power of w there okay so it's order of 2w in fact 2w operations but you write it as order of w for construction of histogram and of course then you still need to do histogram equalization that problem is still there but at least this is what you could uh, optimize here so i want you to uh, to give you stretch your uh, muscles of your mind a bit i would ask you to you do, do this as well in your code okay you just cross check with uh, the simple implementation versus this it's not very difficult but you just need to uh, get used to it that's all is it clear is it clear to everyone sir do we have to update the center pixel value of the previous histogram and uh, no see you this is what you would write it in the output image okay so this is not you what you would uh, just one minute yeah so this is not you won't be uh, you won't be updating this input uh, histogram itself uh, um, while doing it and moving from one pixel to the other pixel you have another image where you would replace this with that and you proceed that's a thank good you, sir. that's thank a you. good point thank, hmm, thank yeah. you sir good good any other uh, uh, yeah feel free to stop me if this is not clear Sir, once can you repeat it again? Yeah. See, suppose uh, you are. I'm. Uh, so one thing I would say is, assume that if you are using a W by W window. Anyway, W. So un unless this distance is W by two, those are all border pixels. You ignore them. You just keep whatever intensity is there. Same for those border pixels. Okay. Let's not worry about that at this point. Now consider those pixels. Uh, where. You have no boundary issues, okay? And then suppose if I compute the histogram, what is the difference between the histogram of this pixel versus this pixel when I am using a window of W by W size? Okay, that is all we are going to look at. Suppose here, when you are moving horizontally, all it brings a change is the look at what is the difference between this window and this window when when you are coming to this window this column is getting subtracted and this this is subtracted and this column is getting added now earlier you constructed the histogram based on these intensities so now these intensities are not there in the ones in the yellows are not there right now so you subtract you look at what are those intensities and from the histogram you subtract uh, one uh, count of them by one there okay don't do it in the number of pixels not already something uh, on pdf you can't do it this number of pixels while counting you do this out and after that you now go to this column and add those pixels for which now for example this is having an intensity of 10 this is having an intensity of 11 12 assume that okay this is assume that this is having 5 6 7 okay now assume that your uh, indexing of your uh, for simplicity let's consider here the indexing is starting from zero okay so that i don't have otherwise you simply have to put plus one there because zero is also there 
so the in the new one where you are constructing how you do it now hr i of uh, for example uh, i am going through this pixel now for example that pixel location is let's say uh, array let's call it as index okay you arrived at this index i am not writing the whole code but uh, that index i already arrived there okay so i of index okay at that one will be 10 so all i need to do is if i am having an array there where i am storing all those histogram in a variable called h h of i of index should i do plus or minus now minus minus that's all you have to do and of course when it comes to the second one there you will be doing index you are mod modifying there in that case you will do there h of index that is where it is stored there that particular value you will do plus plus there hmm, is that clear so will that automatically change the image like or do we need to again map it remap it to uh, corresponding to each location in the image i know can you so like once we just increment or decrement the corresponding values in the uh, in the histogram yeah. then can we directly like uh, does the image automatically change or we'll have to map it again mm, no your question see your question is not clear i think someone else uh, mic is also on it looks like okay see here uh, for example uh, you have the histogram values in terms of number of pixels for the red one okay now you copied that uh, uh, a vector to a new vector h here right so suppose earlier uh, suppose there might be some 10 here also there might be 10 here also okay the assume that the rest is not anywhere 10 so this index number would have number 3 here h of i of index is 3 10 here okay so h of 10 is 3 earlier is it not now you are uh, uh, you are subtracting one there because you are removing this here Why hmm. is Shashwat, is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. I need to work it out. I'll, I'll get. I'll work it out. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. See, all I'm saying is, since I have from values from zero to two fifty five, okay. When I am going through that pixel, so I of index will give me the pixel value that is there. If index is uh, the array index I am going through, okay, I am treating as if this is one, but uh, this could have a 2D array, okay, two, two indexes could be there. Just for simplicity, I am keeping index. This is a vector in, in terms of, it's in fact a two by one vector. So I of index would already tell me now for histogram construction, I need a H value which is varying from zero to 255 uh, right now if my uh, if you are implementing in matlab of course then uh, your, your index will start with one so one will correspond to zero and uh, index of 256 will correspond to 255 so i'm using c convention is comfortable here for me so i'm just using c convention here otherwise perhaps you have to do here uh, if it is zero it would be one so then I, if you are using matlab you have to just put plus one there that's all actually i am clear with the histogram construction i'm asking like once we have done the histogram equalization hmm. how do we again map back from the histogram to the image so like for each pixel do we replace ah, we find the okay, okay okay understood understood see now what you do is after you construct the histogram you look at what is the intensity of this pixel okay suppose this pixel is their value is 15 in your histogram uh, equalization where is this 15 getting mapped to this may be now getting mapped to let's say 20 okay now in your output image you go there and here you keep just a 20 and then you come back see after the end of the entire histogram equalization for a given pixel this whole history you will be constructing for each pixel in fact one histogram equalization operation you will be doing here Sir, will you be doing a zero padding for uh, taking yeah, yeah. into account the corner? Yeah, you could do that actually. Zero padding uh, is probably not the best way here if you want to deal with the uh, border pixels because see something like this you consider here. Ah, if I'm doing zero padding here, this doesn't have much of zeros here. So that would uh, change it a lot. 
so shall we just ignore that yes that's what i'm saying for the time being what you do is you take only those pixels which doesn't have a border issues hmm if you want so to can we mirror it instead yeah like mirror, mirror the last thing to do here mirror is the is the appropriate thing to do here if that is causing you problem go for mirroring i hope uh, uh, the mtech students are aware of what it means by mirroring hmm see for example um, you are taking let's say 4 by 4 image when you have something here 4 by 5 by 5 assume that okay so is you 5 by 5 means here you need two pixels here right two pixels here this pixel and two pixels here you don't have anything here so how to deal with this thing so one way is i i would come back shortly maybe in another uh, um, uh, the next presentation i would, uh, i would just show you something there so what you would do there is one thing is you pad these uh, additional columns here uh, i'll draw that, that got too much bad okay so one way is maximum you are having two here okay so you pad here all zeros that is referred to as zero padding particularly in the histogram you could see zero padding particularly when your window size is very high and you are at this border pixels would screw up things because dark would become too dark and bright will become too bright so then what you would do for example this first so you consider this as your reflection point okay and then this first column you would you would copy here the second column you would copy here and so on and so forth that is how you create these pixels and of course then uh, you 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 would be still remaining with these things which you would do from here you, you you will be bringing them from there that's called as mirroring mm is it clear so anyway if you are uh, you will come back again this when we are discussing about convolution uh, unless you are writing your own code later when you are using it you should be clear when to use what once that is clear your convolution operation in matlab itself would give you an option it will by default maybe doing zero padding but then you could mention whether you want a wrap around or mirror there are uh, slightly different uh, yeah wrap like wrap around is slightly different so that option is also there anyway yeah here uh, as uh, sashwat is mentioning uh, uh, mirroring is a better thing to do uh, than zero pad basically Hmm, is it clear? Any other questions here? Okay. So then I hope there are no questions. Let me see. Any oops. Let me go to normal mode. I think this is the last slide here. I hope. Okay. Yeah. um yeah, so clipped histogram anyway you use matlab uh, in built function itself but just make sure you understand uh, what is it exactly you are clipping there percentages and uh, the window size the relationship between them okay so if there are no questions for this presentation we will move on to the other presentation which is done uh, spatial filtering i'll then move on to the spatial filtering part anyway i don't have much slides here but i would i think rather go to this one note itself this is better i think uh, sir do we have to just code or write report also for the assignment yeah a report uh, yes you have to write some inferences on that and it need not be a very it need not be like a paper writing but uh, you need to wherever it is required i'll be mentioning for example write your inferences about it then you could say you, you could say uh, your observations like uh, you notice here that in so and so region the contrast is less or uh, the intensities are for example focused are uh, in this so and so band to do that you should have high value or low value of gamma and then and hence you have taken this something like that you need to write hmm. so can we put the inferences in the code itself like so that you run the script 
it will give uh, the output along with the inference yeah that can be done but i would like to have the report you just keep your uh, images here so that it would be so uh, like for example i could ask my ts to go through both report and code and uh, report and let me and report me if there are any abnormalities or if there are any issues and for example i could quickly go through just the report where you put your results there so that i don't okay. have to again run the code for example python both python and matlab i need to set up and all otherwise it it becomes easier uh, to get a summary for me hmm, uh, to quickly see what you guys are doing and if there is something to quickly suggest report would help me you'll follow it in very similar lines to what we did earlier in for example in computer vision hmm, so in the similar lines we'll follow here so where the quiz is uploaded hmm uh quiz or uh, this assignment oh uh, sorry assignment i have not yet uploaded uh, i'm just telling you beforehand uh, what are the questions that would be there in that i will do it soon mostly by the end of this week i'll do this hmm. okay yes. i'll drop an email also okay yes okay right yeah hmm so if that is fine we will move on to this image enhancement part using spatial filtering See, so far uh, you are taking a cumulative statistics of intensities, but other than that, you are not looking into the neighborhood exactly. Okay, you 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 might say local histogram to an extent looks into it, but uh, yeah, it's still at a very grass level. That's not what you would uh, use uh, for enhancement. Uh, um, not that's not the only way you could uh, exploit the neighborhood information. This is something you would use a lot of filters. Uh, anyway one portion you have seen uh, for example uh, i think uh, if i am not wrong edge detection we have done this and template matching uh, for both these you have done it in uh, computer vision to some extent uh, but anyway this i am treating it uh, independent of what is covered in the computer vision you might find some overlap uh, but i make this as self contained okay so hope you all had a chance to go through the video of it right Uh, so we started with uh, what enhancement for us to begin with let's consider the simplest case you want to just smooth the image that's what you assume that here and there there is some uh, gaussian noise you just by smoothing out you assume that you, you get an enhanced image to begin with okay that's what we considered here so how do you by the way there was y minus 1 i was writing it should have been y plus 1 i corrected it here anyway right so assume that you are considering 3 by 3 now here the value what you would replace now is a summation of all this pixel intensities that's what if you write it in a brute force way okay now you want to write it in a more uh, much better way this is what you could write then uh, i think if you have gone through it uh, i don't have to repeat this uh, thing basically you are going uh, for this given pixel Uh, window size is minus w by 2 to plus w by 2 uh, on both sides we are considering same of course there is a, you, if you want you could consider w1 w2 but i think this is good enough mostly you would consider a symmetric one in most of the cases right so then what would you write you you are summing up all the intensities there are w square pixels you are considering so you are simply after summing it up you are dividing it with 1 by w square now we are trying to put it as an operation applied on that rather than writing it in this way because this is a very trivial example to start with we have considered but later you would see you could very efficiently implement uh, convolution and correlation operations and that's how you want to uh, implement you don't want to take care of the sliding window and all yourself uh, any convolution when you are doing it over the entire image or even these operations when it is very this again dft part uh, while we are discussing earlier in uh, course works we have seen also there uh, this could be more efficiently for example done there so you go uh, and again uh, this generalizes many other things for example you would see um, uh, you finding out the derivatives finding out the laplace and all of these things we would be doing in the next class using this correlation operation so now how correlate how, how is the correlation operation we are considering i think maybe i would uh, use some illustrations i happen to uh, take from some of the other presentations available i hope that will help okay yeah so look at here so this is your again let me see if i could 
draw here right see this is your kernel that you are using now this is your central pixel on which you want to compute so this center of this and the center of this you would uh, overlay at the same point then multiply the corresponding pixels sum them up that's all you need to do so in other words hit g i z assume that this is row i and column j at that you want to compute the resulting value is g i z that would be equivalent to you go from minus n by 2 pixels to plus n by 2 pixels or in other words minus n by 2 row to plus n by 2 of that row h of these are kl values and for this you go i plus k and j plus l so you you see both in this way rows and in this way the columns that's all you do okay and for those of you who have done signal processing you have seen correlation um, the uh, the twin brother of him is a uh, convolution right how is it different just that there is a flipping happening there so that's exactly what we are having a we had a look at here once we have written this hmm. so if you are doing a flipping then what how could you write it it would be simply minus i minus j if you are flipping the mask that would be minus i minus j so and then you could do it same again convolution has a nice property of um, uh, commutative properties also there so you could either do the flipping on the image side okay this is tricky so just pay attention here the way we are flipping it so either you flip the values in the image or in the kernel we call it as a kernel mask um, there are few other names also we would be uh, using okay um, so convolution mask you say it are the kernel if i say the convolution kernel are very uh, specifically something then only it means you need to flip otherwise unless explicitly mentioned anything related to convolution you don't have to flip most of the times so you could simply do uh, correlation with that okay anyways so then we notice that if it is so this is where i am telling you like how to convolve this uh, how to flip the mask which is why why probably you did it earlier in the 1d case now if it is a 2d mask all you need to do is uh, this where it um, i can't write it here one minute let's just make check yeah say suppose oh, i'm not sure if i write it here this would get uh, i'll just try to see if it is copy uh, move or copy i want to make it uh, one more copy mm, then there it's move and copy both are there and let me keep it here and copy okay so yeah see one way is this one you flip along this uh, axis for example then it would come here okay then horizontal flip uh, so vertical axis you flip it now along here you have to flip so this would come here so you start writing it here this one would come and so on and so forth you could go but much easier one would be you do a horizontal flip for example first okay you could this order is also commutative you could change them so this one two three would come here seven eight nine will go this row would go here this would come here so you get that and anyway uh, this horizontal flip this would remain same then on top of it you do a vertical flip so eight five six would remain eight five two would remain here and then this 963 would be coming here this 741 would be coming there that's convenient one for you okay so that's all we discussed here then i gave you a couple of exercises uh, one exercise being we are slightly moving from uh, smoothing operation to what is this you could call it as for example if it is an image what is the kind of operation we are trying to do uh, in case of uh, the first exercise Sir, is that an average filter? Sorry? Is the corresponding mask an average filter? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, did one you try five, that? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to hold that for a moment, but that's true, in fact. Hmm. Uh, before that, I'm yes, I am. Yeah, you already censored that. You already worked it out? Yes, sir. Yeah, hope how many of you, most of you, I hope, had worked it out. 
uh, this is basically what is the kind of enhancement we are doing how are, what is it that you could call it the moment you see it something like this and then your i okay the new value is this what could you call it usually rather than smoothing sir i differentiated an equal to 0 so i got i equal to sum of my that's value. correct that's correct good good so in fact I, i i will just come to that that's in fact correct but before that my question is uh you want to find out a pixel value you are assuming now uh, that more or less all the pixels around it have the same value right so you assume the new value is such that it minimizes the sum of squares of differences in its neighboring pixels so just like smoothing what is it that you are doing here moving average filter uh is it moving well means no, it, no. it is becoming moving average but uh, this is what you refer to as denoising is it not uh, means of course smoothing also can denoise so that's exactly what it is happening here but the assumption here is um, the intensities of all these pixels are more or less same that's the assumption in its neighborhood and then what you are trying to do is let the intensity of all these pixels be same and that be i for example now you are trying to uh, minimize this sum of the squares of differences of this i with respect to all these pixels that's exactly what you are trying to do here is everybody able to um, clearly see this or is there any questions here this is an important uh, thing Hmm, is it clear to everyone? So what is this, this turning out to be? A simple averaging filter. So now you could say that's what. How do you do that now? So how are you doing it to minimize that? Hmm, you guys have tried it, right? You already told the answer just now. Some of you, a couple of you, have already told the answer. so how do you minimize this now analytically so we can differentiate with respect right. to y and differentiate with respect to i so what would be that for example here you still have p equal to 1 to 5 correct and this differentiated with respect to i would give you what does it give you y is of summation um, yeah i minus ip correct so that you need to make it to in order zero. to find out minimization you find it to zero anyway now this constant doesn't matter correct so this i will become now what would be the resulting equation here i equal to 5 i so you are five times you are summing up i so that would be equal to 5 i okay minus of summation of p or 1 to 5 i subscript p right that equal to 0 so 5i is going to be this and i equal to 1 by 5 which is nothing but a simple averaging filter so exactly what we discussed at the very beginning of this lecture is a this uh, simple averaging filter in other words after looking at this derivation what we could see there is nothing that stops us from extending it into uh, 2d all that is going to change is the notation uh, the uh, uh, the variable name that we are using there and the number of pixels would change but nevertheless the expression is remaining same there right the whole uh, optimization would remain same there so what you could say is average filter when you are doing it it would give for each pixel an intensity that would minimize sum of squares of differences of that pixel intensity okay the new intensity added through computed over the entire neighborhood that's the important thing here hmm, is the point clear to you all hmm, any questions here okay then i am assuming everybody understood it very well i so that i could ask you later some other derivations as well in similar lines okay good 
uh, again this is a straightforward problem mm. so you work it out i you know, where you i want you to so for example you will have problem with uh, as i was mentioning uh, when you are trying to let's say compute what would be the value convolution for this right so there is uh, there are pixels here so you you will be keeping this two here okay this two you would be keeping here and then multiplying the corresponding element so two into two here but then you don't know what's the value so you have here for example this is required this is required right so then yeah of course the rest would come here there is no problem you just see whatever it is required so yeah for example this 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 okay this this you don't have values so use zero padding here that means the corresponding elements are zero there that's what you um, consider there and then you do that out and give us so that finally you would be uh, representing uh, our in, the, in your final result hmm, you would be representing values for example convolution at this point would come as the element here okay and so on and so forth this once you do it just use the uh, inbuilt command in matlab also where you give these two matrices and ask it to perform i think it's conv2 right conv2 and then you could mention um, what is the kind of uh, padding you want to use also similarly correlation i think cor2 cor2 will be there then if you want you experiment with uh, different kinds of uh, uh, padding also instead of zero uh, all zeros you could for example do as i was mentioning this could be two two that's another way you do the padding two two one okay and what will be the values here so this is your line of reflection and this would be two one two three that's good enough two lines are good enough when you have just three by three right uh, similarly you do it anyway you, you can do it and then uh, you just check it with uh, what it does with matlab but for the time being here zero padding is good enough we are not worried about uh, uh, which are there in the boundaries at this point hmm. okay uh, any uh, any questions or comments so far so we have to normalize the filter also right uh, the which one like when so in the exercise too uh normalize the filter means the whole thing divided by yeah. divided by sum of all the elements do we have to do that uh, no no it's not required because anyway it doesn't have any meaning as such this filter uh, suppose uh, uh, had it been some averaging filter and all uh, that weighting is required this is just for example i have given hmm. okay sir. yeah uh, so by the way uh, this is particularly for the mtech students i would like to hear or uh, anyone not from uh, e btec final year students because this anyway we discussed at this point uh, why for an uh, so what would happen if this weighting factor is not there 1 by 9 is not there what is the implication of that if you stop because this is something you would see later while next class we would be dealing with derivatives also let's say uh, there will be some weighting factor that is given here what would be the impact of that weighting factor if i drop the weighting factor what would happen is just a scaling factor there nothing more uh, but uh, wh what could be in terms of storing the image can that have any impact if i am dropping that multiplication factor which is same everywhere okay even btec students can answer <laughs> if nobody is answering what would be the case if i am not dropping that it can go more than 255 the values that's it that's it good that's what it could happen it can go beyond that value and then um, uh, can there be any quantizations happening here effect of quantization can it come when i am finally storing this image is it possible when i am applying an averaging filter can you repeat the question when i am applying an averaging filter and storing the resulting image can there be any quantization effects happening in terms of intensities
I think there would be some slight. Uh, right, because what you would be getting there could be a value, non-integer value, because there is a uh, there is a division by nine there, right? So if it is not nicely falling, for example, in one of those, if everywhere the intensity is ten and in one in one point it is eleven, right? So then how much will I get? Ninety-one by nine is what I would be getting there, right? So there could be some uh, quantize. So finally, you need to um, approximate it to the nearest integer while storing it as an image. So just make sure uh, while you are storing it as an image, since after you apply this all these operations, what you would be ending up getting is floating values, right? U int eight conversion. You have to do it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, so. Uh, there is one more uh, thing I have not worked out myself, but I would like you to give it a try. Suppose I'll give you the answer. See if you could find out a proof for it. Mm, I'm not doing going to do this is if you don't understand, leave it. But I would appreciate if you try for it. Any idea on what this filter would give you? See here I'm taking sum of squares of differences of intensities, right? Now I am taking just absolute differences and summing them up and trying to minimize this. Find the i that minimizes. Any idea on what filter it gives? Just a simple scaling, I guess. No, 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 no. See, this again. Uh, find out an i like this differentiation is a bit uh, tricky here. Hmm. This gives you. You have already studied one filter. Uh, can you just make a guesswork at least here? What could be that filter? Averaging. Uh, no, averaging we are already done here, right? You tell me some other name. <laughs> a blind guess is also this is good enough. What's the question? Uh, Suppose, see, what we have seen is if I am trying to see if you don't understand this, don't worry. This is just a uh, um, so reverse of the image. Uh, no, see, earlier what we noticed it there is suppose if I take sum of squares of differences of that intensity with the new intensity i, i is that finding out i such that it minimizes the sum of squares of differences with all the neighboring, including all the neighboring pixels, right? This turned out to be. A simple averaging filter. Okay. Now I don't want to take square, but I try to minimize the absolute difference. What could be this filter? In computer vision, you have come across this filter. Basically, we we discussed uh, briefly about this filter. Okay, I'll give you the name. Uh, if anybody could derive or show me a derivation, that would be great. I have not tried myself. It's a median filter. That's what they are saying it. Mm, I didn't uh, try it myself, the derivation. If one of you can do it, please uh, send send me that write-up. Uh, just take a photo and send me that write-up, proving that this is equivalent to a median filter. Mm, if, if others, uh, if you are not very interested, you can safely drop it. There is no problem. I'm not going to ask you this derivation in the exam. You can safely drop that out. Otherwise, I, I would encourage you to give it a try. Okay. Yeah, that's all uh, for these two uh, video lectures. Uh, so what we will do in the next, probably uh, maybe at, my, at most two more lectures would be there where I would be. Let me, I can stop share here. Okay. So there could be two more at max uh, lectures would be there. I can stop the recording also.